Charger community and welcome back to another school year. We're preparing and looking forward to a year full of learning for your young people. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Denise Thompson and I have been teaching middle school and high school science for the last five years here at WCA. Last year, I began serving as the elementary principal in Tangent was still teaching a few of the high school science classes. As the elementary principal, it's my goal to help serve our teachers in creating a safe environment for your students to learn and grow. I'm here to help them in partnering with you to help your child succeed. I want you to feel like you can reach out with any questions, comments, or concerns regarding your student. Should a student need correction, I'll be able to come alongside and discuss how we can help that student succeed in the classroom. I look forward to the opportunity of working with our elementary school students and getting to meet and aid our families throughout the school year. I wanted to start off with just a few reminders about this uh, upcoming school year. Most of these things many of you know, but just as a nice beginning of the year update, we're going to talk about dress code, hair code, sick policy, and some first day reminders. Let's start with dress code for boys. First, boys can wear uniform style shorts or pants in navy, black, or khaki, uh, those colors only please. And they're also permitted to wear jeans as well, but not jean shorts, just jean pants. Uh, gentlemen also are to, required to wear um, a collared shirt like a traditional polo or Oxford style shirt, and then belts are to be worn starting in the fourth grade. As far as girl dress code, um, shirts do not have to be collared, but you can do polos and traditional Oxford shirts if you wish. Um, that starts for girls in sixth grade, but in elementary school, they can have any sort of shirt or blouse um, there as long as there's no pictures or words. So we don't want like graphic t-shirts um, for the girls. Then the uniforms, uh, pants can be traditional uniform style or shorts to the knee in navy, black, or khaki as well. Be mindful that many stores now sell jeggings as part of the uniform section. I know I have four daughters, so we go we go back to school shopping just the same. And with them, they always have the jeggings there with the traditional uniforms. Be mindful that the jeggings are not permitted as all, both genders, girls and boys, need to have loose fitting pants um, for our campus. Dresses and skirts are also allowed to be worn by the young ladies, um, but we do ask that they go to the knee, all the way to the knee. Even if they wear leggings under the dress or skirt, it's the dress itself would still need to come all the way to the knee. Um, and shorts should be worn under if leggings are not, just for playground purposes, help keep their modesty there as they're tumbling on that beautiful playground that they have access to out there. If you have any questions uh, or comments or concerns about any of that, please go ahead and reach out to me. I'm happy to clarify. Um, any of those things for you. Um, the handbook has more detail there as well. Some other dress code reminders is please have your child wear closed toe shoes. This is really just for their safety on the, on the playground. Um, so we ask that they don't have any sort of open toed uh, shoes there. And then hoodies um, have approved brand logos of Adidas, Nike, Reebok, North Face, Under Armour, Columbia, Pentagonia, Champion, uh, and CCSA or WCA uh, hoodies are allowed, or they can be plain colored. They can they can be like striped or patterned um, as well. But we ask that they don't have any large pictures on it. And I will say one thing I notice um, is there's a lot of sports apparel that people like to wear, and that's fine. However, even if your sports sweatshirt is one of those approved brands. Uh, sports team sweatshirts are not part of the approved hoodies list. So we ask that you keep that in mind as you're doing your back to school shopping. All right, hair code for the boys just needs to be off the ears, eyebrows, and collar. It needs to be a natural color. And things like fads with extreme hairstyles like mohawks or mullets are not permitted. You can see the handbook for more detail. On, on that hair code, girls needs to be a natural color and styles that are feminine. Um, things like fairy hair where they tie the tinsel in to the hair is not permitted here uh, during the school year. Uh, so if you have further guidance, go ahead and check out our handbook. Uh, it's on Sycamore for you to, to see the most updated uh, version there. 
SICK policy has been updated uh, this year in the handbook, so make sure you check that out. But essentially, it's children need to be symptom free for 24 hours before sending them back. Uh, things like fever, vomit, diarrhea, oozing at the eye from something like pink eye or something like that, they need to be symptom free for 24 hours or have like doctor's approval of returning to school uh, for those sorts of things. If a student is sent home during a school day, they're now required to be out the entire following day as well. So for example, if a student is sent home on Monday because they threw up in class, they're not allowed to return to school until Wednesday if they have been symptom free for 24 hours. Please help us cut down on the passing of those germs by keeping your child home if they are not feeling well. Uh, we understand that it's an can be an inconvenience at times, but we really want, don't want that to pass through uh, the whole classroom. So if they got sent home on Monday and they got sick on Tuesday at noon, please keep them home Wednesday as well until they're 24 hours symptom free. But if they are sent home on Monday, they won't be allowed to return until Wednesday of that week as an example there. So please help us and be mindful of that sick policy update. Finally, on the first day of school this year, we'd like to invite our kindergarten families to our campus to walk their students to class. But after the first day, we will ask you to use Carline and normal drop-off procedures. First through fifth grade, we would appreciate it if you could use our normal drop-off procedures as you'll have a picture opportunity the, the day before on August 12th when you have your teacher orientation and visit the rooms that during that grade level orientation. And that schedule can be found on Sycamore. Keep in mind the first day of elementary students will be August 13th, it's a Tuesday, and there will be an early dismissal with K-5 through 2nd grade dismissing at 10.30 and 3rd through 5th grade dismissing at 10.55. Um, will you be using normal uh, dismissal locations and procedures for that day? So be sure to check out that video as well. And then our first full day will be August 14th. We we'll look forward to a great year and please let me know if you have any questions.